Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another, <clears throat> I hope it's just a, a good, solid episode here on this little G's on Inspiration Bridge, where we are currently being inspired. Lots of deer flies today, because I think they really like the humidity. Seems like they do. And they take a chunk. I mean, they're like carnivorous. They are. They're quite baby. I guess you got to eat, right? As long as that's not me up here in little G uh, in the woods. Okay, uh, let's get going with happy and healthy. That's really what I want to talk about right now. Happy and healthy. Happy is actually more and more important than healthy, as it turns out, when we're 90. Uh, and I, I brought up the famous Harvard study before. So it's a longitudinal study, which means it's gone on like for a really long time, pass, you know, through generations, passing through people's lifetimes. And so researchers kind of pass the torch to the next person. So it started out, I think, in the early 19, sorry, 20th century. That's what, that's what I meant to say. Early, early 20th century. And it started out with all boys and men, 18, right up on through into their 70s, 80s, and 90s. And it's amazing what they found out. So the, the biggie, we're going to save for last, okay? So some of it we already know. Um, don't smoke anything, right? Which I'm just saying how it is. If you do, and I'm not judging, whatever. Um, alcohol within moderation. Um, I know I, I like wine with dinner and stuff, but if it gets too much, there's a lot of adverse effects on the body and the mind, obviously. And exercising, you know, it doesn't mean be a gym rat. Um, walking, actually, like I'm doing right now. Oprah and I walk every day. And, you know, she's one of my dear friends. She just doesn't know. We walk. I walk every day unless it's lightning, you know, or something comes up, but it, I, I don't, I don't, I, when you open the window, if something comes up, it gets easy to not do it. So it's like, oh, I see a few raindrops. Maybe not today. No way. Um, I put a hat on. I put my, my, uh, rain jacket on my bright red rain jacket and come out here anyway. Lightning is really the only thing. And then when that turns to, when it all turns to snow, it's easy. Snowshoeing and stuff like that. And, um, or, you know, whatever, because you want it to be, you want to, you want to want to do it. And so, ouch. Yikes. I mean, if you are a gym rat and that works for you, that's great. You just, the important thing is it can't be like a military drill. It has to be something that you, you want to do. So if you're younger and you're into whatever and you're into, in a league with, you know, basketball or whatever, that's awesome. If you're in the season, part, part of the season crew in your 50s, I'm my, actually in my late 50s now. It's wild. It's great, too. It's just so good. Walking can be the best thing. My grandfather walked every day of his life and lived right up into his 80s, happy and fine and no assistance needed right up to the end. Harry Truman, too. My husband's a huge Harry Truman fan. And Harry, same thing. Walked every day. All right, so you get the walking thing. And eating right. My grandmother used to say balance. It doesn't mean you need to be a vegetarian or a vegan, unless you've got certain health you know, stuff. But for your for your regular situation, where there's, there are no specific you know, um, restrictions there, just being balanced is good enough. Salads and fruit and, you know, broiled chicken, whatever. It's, and it doesn't mean you can't ever have a French fry, thank goodness, right? And go to the fair and have fried dough and all that stuff. Balance is what it's all about. You know, that like the up and down yo-yo diets, we know just don't work because the mind does not want to be in the deprivation state for any kind of reason. And there's, I've done videos on that. There's more than just the food thing. But when we're in a state of deprivation, that's all we think about. So it has like the reverse effect, okay? So we have the thing, okay? So we know eat right exercise, sleeping is huge. People underestimate how much sleeping really affects our mood and chronic sleep de depression can actually, can be, can be a straight road to depression. It also affects our metabolism um, because the ho hunger hormones grow and then lectin get all screwed up. Those are the hormones that help us to feel satiated and, and also hungry and they go back and forth and they get all messed up. And not, chronic sleep deprivation also mimics aging and we get irritable and we're not as creative. So if we don't get enough sleep, we basically um, get crabby, fat, sick and depressed. So not a good route to go. Um, and then, okay, so then what, I'm, what am I leading up to now? Okay, so the biggie... There are all those, um, oh, there's another one that's huge, which is read every day. So walk every day, read every day, because stimulating the mind, I have a friend who does all this research on cognitive reserve. Actually, it's like putting, like making deposits in the bank for when we're older and, and you know, having, um, preventing um, cognitive decline, you know, keeping all your faculties. So if you want to do your best not to land 
on, you know, somebody's porch in a rocking chair wearing an afghan, you know, and, 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 and um, you know, just n not having a lot going on. We can prevent a lot of that. Not all of it. We can't, you know, sometimes there's genetics and things like that, but there are things we can do a lot more than people think. And reading every day is one of them. And also stimulating the mind by um, learning new languages, something that is actually challenging to you. So cognitive reserves are huge. And we do have... We have a lot of agency to prevent it as much as we can. Again, we can't control genetics and, and sometimes life happens and things like that. But there's a lot more we can do than we used to think. Because it's not a straight road to um, not being with it like we used to think. Not at, not at all. Okay. <clears throat> and then last is the biggie. The big one. Hi, G. The big one is relationships. It's the number one box to check for longevity and quality of life. So how long we live and how well we're doing it, how happy we are, okay? So we, it was found out that like at 85 and 90, happy was actually more important than healthy. And the ha and those in that in the Harvard study talked about, you know, all the, 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 a lot of that issues. I mean, they had a lot of, some <clears throat> developed mental illness, some developed um, you know, alcoholism, some became presidents of the United States in that study, actually, uh, <clears throat> or at least one, you know, so obviously it's all anonymous, and, and there's some big success stories, it's just a huge mix of life, right, the number one that got them through everything was their relationship, so it means, um, and it doesn't mean all relationships, right, it means the positive ones, toxic relationships actually have the reverse effect, so in other words, staying married, just to stay married. And I'm a huge fan of solid long-term relationships and sticking it out and as much, you know, definitely, unless there's a reason you, that just is toxic and you can't. Because staying married or in a long-term long relationship um, that's toxic or a long-term relationship that's not romantic even, a best friendship or even a, somebody who's blood-related, you know, we've talked about that. And it's, I'm talking about really toxic like that person is walking turpentine okay they need to go i mean like release release because that's actually has the counter um effect it, where it's very very bad and, and causes dis-ease things like that so we're talking about the, having people in our lives and at least one um where you can count on that person no matter what it means you can call them at three o'clock in the morning and they'll listen and be there for you or maybe come over if they're close enough proximity but they'll be there be there for you no matter what non-judgmentally they'll just get right in your rib cage and hear about your um whatever's you know going on in your life and no matter how painful and not judge you and not tell anyone and you can 100 percent count on them that's what we're talking about and that person is also typically there to see you rise and is excited, not jealous, but excited. Wow, it was amazing to see you get that award or start that business or you finally, you know, got into the house after saving so much and working two jobs, you know, whatever it is, and not be jealous, like, oh, you got a house, you know, but to be so happy for you, whatever your accomplishments are. And this is the, this is food for the soul, food for the soul. Um, and, and that's it. It's also a reminder when we have these relationships of our connection, of our connection um, to something bigger than ourselves. That is absolutely huge. And we've also talked about, which is true with this Harvard study, um, is that connect, a genuine loving connection is the true antidote, you know, that, that, that kind of, or the anti-venom that works against shame, all the bad stuff, okay? All the bad stuff. A loving, genuine connection. Shame cannot... It's like kind of like shining a light on the Dementors or something. Like it just ooh, it goes back in the ground. Shame can't take it when there's genuine love and connection. And, and that's a huge fuel for a high quality, long life. Ouch again. Dear, dear is just loving. Must be because I'm so sweet. That's what Giovanni, tell her, Giovanni and I tell ourselves. Okay, happy and healthy. That's our discussion on this glorious day. All right, this is Kimberly Quinn signing up from the beautiful... Deerfly infested northern Vermont. Have a mindful, happy, healthy day.